Do you know which is the best geometrical shape for building a storehouse with maximum capacity and minimum amount of building material? Well, I don't know about you, but these honeybees definitely know the answer to this question. They are very fascinating creatures for a number of reasons. Their incredible work ethic, the sweet liquid coal they produce and their internet social structure. But have you ever wondered why they make their combs always hexagonal? After all, there are so many shapes in geometry. Why not triangle, square, pentagon or circle? Let's assume for a second if bees use circle for construction of their honeycombs. Circle when placed together in a compact pattern have gaps between them and therefore bees would be able to store less honey. There are other various possible shapes like triangle, squares, pentagon and hexagon. Then why did bees choose only hexagon? Well, the structure of hexagon looks very close to circle and moreover because out of all these shapes, hexagon have the smallest circumference and maximum area. This makes bees a very clever mathematician in nature. Using this knowledge of bees has helped man in making many emergency housing and shelters for homeless people. Now after bees, let's come to the lotus leaf. What's special about lotus leaf? Well, we learn to make self-cleaning cleaners from lotus leaf. Lotus leaf appears to be smooth as it's water repelling, but it rather has a rough texture which traps air on its surface on which water droplets float, entrapping all the dirt material, making the leaf cleaning itself. A professor at University of Bonn in Germany has developed a surface based on lotus leaf. This knowledge has led to new generation of paint, glass and fabric finishes which minimizes the use of chemical or laborious cleaning. How does nature repel bacteria? We are not the only ones saving ourselves from bacteria. Turns out sharks have been doing it since ages. They have no barnacles, no bacterial growth on its surface. They don't have anyone to clean their surfaces with cleaners or brushes. So how does the shark keep itself bacteria free? It turns out that these sharks, especially Galapagos sharks, have a unique pattern on its skin denticles. This diamond shaped pattern prevents the bacteria to land on its surface and adhere. This extraordinary feature of these sharks was organized by a company called Sharklet Technologies. They are using the same pattern on the surface of the hospital. This pattern does not allow the bacteria to settle on the hospital surfaces and has resulted in low fertility rates in US hospitals. After learning antibacterial technology from sharks, let's move on to this little critter who knows how to harvest fresh water from fog. Stenocara gracilipes, or commonly known as foxtan beetle, is a species of beetle living in Namib Desert of South Africa. This is one of the driest deserts of the world, receiving only 1.4 cm of rain per year. Where it is impossible to find fresh water, this little critter survives by collecting water on its bumpy back from morning fog. To harvest water, the beetle stands on a ridge of sand facing into the breeze with its body angled at 45 degrees, showing off its hardened wings. These wings have microscopic bumps which have water-loving tips and waxy sides. The fog droplets settle in these hydrophilic tips. Later, water materializes and goes to the waxy side, from which water slides down to its mouth. This amazingly unique feature, when recognized by Grimshaw, one of the architectural firms, resulted in the creation of synthetic surfaces which catches fog water 10 times better than any fog catching nets. Now I'm going to tell you about the magnificence of spiders and how much we can learn from them. Spiders are truly global citizens. You can find spiders in nearly every terrestrial habitat. What you are seeing on the screen are spinneret glands on the abdomen of spiders. These glands produce six different types of silk, which get spun together into a fiber. This fiber is tougher than any fiber known to mankind today. The closest we have come to is amaret fiber, which is used in aerospace and military. And for making that, 
it creates lot of pollution and loads of energy is used yet the spider manages to do it in harmony with nature using water and dead insects as its raw materials some scientists along the globe with biologists are studying the spiders and its mechanism to form a fiber which is not only the toughest but also lightest now on the screen is charcoal beetle or the fire beetles these beetles can detect a forest fire at 80 km away that's roughly 10000 times the range of man made fire detectors these beetles have a special set of sensors which can detect infrared radiations what's more they don't require any wires connected to electrical systems burning any fossil fuel so much self sustainable don't you think now imagine fire alarms based on this little guy's technology it will bring revolution in disaster management industry we shall now move on to discussing various case studies for the same wherein the architects have developed the concept based on biomimicry and produce appealing and sustainable designs architects of today believe that we should be looking to nature for both our inspiration and the solution to our design dilemmas by looking to nature we can create more efficient and sustainable systems many engineers and architects are practicing biomimicry looking to nature for answers to the world's most pressing problems we shall now discuss more in the coming slides the first case study we shall be discussing is e skate building in zimbabwe wherein the learning from termites is done to create sustainable design the building is an architectural marvel in its use of biomimicry principles there's a common belief about termites as building destroyer as we all know that's not true the east gate building is one such example it is basically an office complex which has an air conditioning system modeled on the self cooling mounds of one of the termites known as macro terms michael sen that maintains the temperature inside their nest within 1 degree day and night the mounds created by the termite has the shape of a flattened almond as you can see on the screen with a long north south axis that catches the light during the day and releases the heat during the night termites are able to open and close a series of heating and cooling vents throughout the walls of the mound during the day hence when the interior temperature becomes too hot vents can be opened thus rising warm air by stack effect having learned this theory from termites architect mike pierce designed the east gate building the solution was a passive cooling structure with specially designed hooded windows variable thicknesses wall and light colored paint to reduce heat absorption the termite mound therefore should inspire developers and architects because as it turns out if we view the termite mound as the analog of our own respiratory system that is lungs then we should be able to design breathing buildings that have that wall serve more as membranes rather than barriers the second project to be discussed is the eden project in cornwall england the eden project is the world's largest greenhouse it is the second most visited paid attraction in england it was designed by grimshaw architects and opened in march 2001 The concept of this structure is modeled around soap bubbles and pollen grains as shown in the image on the screen. The architects of the project by looking to nature discovered that the most effective way to create a spherical surface is by using geodesics which is hexagons and pentagons. The bubbles are a series of giant hexagons which are welded together and then inflated. The biomes are made of ethylene tetrafluoroethylene ETFT SE a transparent floor polymer that is used instead of glass and plastic in many modern buildings today ETSE is incredibly strong and much lighter than glass because of the lightness of the material less steel was used for reinforcement which means more light can enter the space and less energy is required to heat space in winters In fact, the structure of Eden project itself weighs less than the air it contains. Isn't it amazing? In the Eden project domes, there are these geometric panels. In these panels, there are the ETFE pillows. Each pillow is attached to a web of interlocking steel tubes. 
each dome actually has two web layers one with the hexagonal and pentagonal panels and one with the triangular panels the total eden structure basically uses around 625 hexagons 16 pentagons and 190 triangles the eden project is just one of the many excellent and inspiring examples of biomimicry that we have today and how man can learn to be efficient by mimicking what is already happening in nature next project in line is gherkin tower of london the tower is now the pride of london skyline forming the signature london backdrop for many movies as you all know the architect norman foster designed the tower inspired by the venus flower basket sponge this sponge sits in an underwater environment with strong water currents these deep sea organisms survive despite the absence of light The gherkin is essentially an elongated curved shaft with a rounded end that is suggestive of a stretched egg. It is sheltered uniformly around the outside with glass panels and is rounded off at the corners. As seen in the picture, the typical floor plan houses an enclosed structural core and locates offices around the perimeter. This circular plan is the key feature of the ventilation strategy of the tower as it is rotated on each floor by 5 degrees. The last case study we will be discussing is of Lily Park the floating city. This city is one amazing piece of art of mimicking nature. The basic inspiration for the project comes from a water lily as evident through the images. With global sea levels predicted to rise significantly over the next century due to climate change and global warming, a lot of people living in low-lying areas are expected to be displaced from their homes. Architect Vincent Calibaut has come up with a possible relocation destination for these climate change refugees in the form of the lily pad concept a self sufficient floating city that would accommodate up to 50000 people the innovative project would support life on terrace fields provide ample space for food grading collect rainwater generate its own power through natural energy sources which include solar wind and wave energy which is obviously easily captured at the sea lily pad comes across as an eye catching design that will hopefully get people thinking about ways to tackle the looming problem of climate change refugees i guess everyone here might be amazed as to how nature is being used in the field of architecture and construction technology in today's world giving numerous ideas to each one of us now the whole idea of learning about this new and upcoming field of biomimicry was to work together for a better sustainable living it is becoming progressively clearer that a change has to be made in the built environment with respect to environmental concerns globally biomimicry would help us to overcome many environmental issues which includes greenhouse gas global warming acid rain and even the ozone hole mimicking ecosystems are one readily available example for humans to learn from and an inspiring prospect for future human habitat with this we would like to end this presentation and say that biomimicry architecture as the new contemporary architectural style of the 21st century will revolutionize the architectural world in every way possible architecture has a small role to play in our daily life but it has a great influence in the world we live in thank you